keep my word, says the Lord, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him. Alleluia. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my own joy may be in you and your joy be complete. This is my commandment, love one another as I have loved you. A man can have no greater love than to lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I shall not call you servants anymore, because a servant does not know his master's business. I call you friends, because I have made known to you everything I have learned from my Father. You did not choose me. No, I chose you, and I commissioned you to go out and to bear fruit, fruit that will last and then the Father will give you anything you ask him in my name. What I command you is to love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Welcome once again to our celebration of Mass this evening, and it is wonderful to see so many people booking places at Mass each week. I know it's a bit of a bother, but thank you for going to the trouble of doing that. We hope that the need to book a place will soon come to an end. We will update you once we have received new guidance, but please now do encourage family and friends to return to Mass, to return to Jesus the true vine. Without him, as St. John says, we can do nothing. In two weeks, we celebrate the feast of Pentecost, marking the beginning of the church. The Holy Spirit is sometimes referred to as the forgotten person of the Blessed Trinity. We find ourselves asking God for what we need, or praying to Jesus to help us, but we often neglect God the Holy Spirit. Thursday next is Ascension Day, and then on Friday this week, we begin a novena to the Holy Spirit for nine days at 6.30 a.m. on Zoom. Please do invite and encourage as many people as you can to join us. There is a great spiritual power in a large gathering of people praying simultaneously for a new experience of the Holy Spirit. Please help to make this novena a truly transformative experience for our parish. And we see a powerful demonstration of the Holy Spirit in the first reading from Mass this evening. As a result of the coming of the Holy Spirit on them, Cornelius and his household undergo a conversion to faith in Jesus. Not only that, but Peter undergoes a conversion where he now recognizes that God does not have favorites, but that anyone of any nationality who fears God and does what is right is acceptable to him. Salvation is not just for the Jews, but for Gentiles as well. So this was a really big, important moment in the life of the early church, coming about through the work and power of the Holy Spirit. Nothing can happen in a parish, nothing in the church, nothing in our own lives without an awareness 
of our utter dependence on the Holy Spirit. We need conversion. Conversion is an ongoing process rather than a one-off event. We need that gradual daily change of life and faith that happens only in the power of the Holy Spirit. All things are possible to God, therefore a, a road to Damascus experience is possible. But for most of us, even St. Paul, conversion is a lifelong conforming of oneself to Christ, becoming more like him through the grace of the Holy Spirit. Conversion is necessary if we are to grow in love. Jesus gives the disciples a new commandment, love one another as I have loved you. And he calls his disciples, not servants, but friends. In this intimate relationship of love in Jesus, we are commanded to love others as he have loved, has loved us. We saw and experienced that love of Jesus in Holy Week as he washed his disciples' feet and then at his death on the cross. The Holy Spirit is the love between the Father and the Son. We need to grow in the life of the Holy Spirit if we are to grow in love. In the two weeks up to Pentecost, let us remember to pray to the Holy Spirit more than we usually do. We receive the gift of the Holy Spirit in baptism, and since baptism, our bodies have been temples of the Holy Spirit. There is always that poignant moment at a funeral mass when the body of the deceased is incensed with incense as a reminder that since baptism, that person's human body has been the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit, a temple of the Holy Spirit. We don't have to search for the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit dwells within us. St. Paul tells us the Holy Spirit comes to help us in our weakness. And when we cannot find words in order to pray, the Spirit of God prays within us. So do join the Novena to the Holy Spirit beginning on Friday. We need the healing of the Holy Spirit in this time of pandemic. We pray for those countries very seriously affected at this time, India and Brazil and other countries. We need the love of the Holy Spirit and the joy of the Holy Spirit. And we need to pray for our young people who will be confirmed on the Feast of Pentecost. If we are to bear fruit in the Christian life, if our parish is to bear fruit, we need to remain in Jesus and in his church and we need to appeal to the Holy Spirit. So let us pray from now until Pentecost. Send forth your Spirit, O Lord, and renew the face of the earth. <laughs>